How's it going, people? Welcome back to AFTV and welcome back to News Daily. I'm here again. Mr. Dan Potts in the <laughs> building. Come on. Always a pleasure, bro. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, sweet, man. Sweet. Yeah. Listening to Mikel Arteta today was interesting and looking forward to the weekend, bro. See what we can do. You never know what's going to happen, do you now? <laughs> it's you, just you, a, we don't. It's a prediction, isn't it? We you don't, just... Dan. It's, it's hard to... It's hard to predict even. Mm. We say it's a prediction, but it's hard to predict results. It's hard to predict what's around the corner for us. Mm. We're very much going in blind as fans. Yeah, it's difficult, man. And I think at the moment, I think everybody who listens to me realises that I'm not a huge fan of this manager, but doesn't mean I don't I don't want to win games of football so yeah, that I yeah. see him get sacked. Do you know what I mean? So I know there are certain fan base or section of the fan base out there that I know for a fact that do want that and I think that's crazy you know you can't want your football team to lose a game of football that's just it's just not not on as far as I'm concerned I was however, actually going to ask you about that yeah yeah however I do sit there and think how long is this going to go on for when is this going to last I still believe it's a question of when this guy's going to go not if Yeah. he needs to win at Burnley you've got to take it one at a time at the moment and forget you know the, uh, the, the, the situation of the North London derby just for now but if you take those two results I need to see improvement and progress Turkish and at the moment I'm not really seeing either of those at the moment the result against Norwich was obviously pleasing because we got three points we're off the bottom of the table yeah. and Norwich are no longer looking down at us but when you look at the situation long term I still see worrying signs and I think although the last 20 minutes against Norwich were some positive signs going forward we're still not scoring enough bro you know That's... it's this it's a wor when is the last time we've not been able to score goals at Arsenal do you know what I mean it's, it's a worry isn't it it's mad because you, you know when Oba was banging all of those goals mm. we didn't see goals as that much of a concern even though when we looked at the numbers 80% of our goals were coming through Oba mm. and once that dwindles you've got a big problem and that's exactly what happened last season mm. and this summer we failed to address um, not maybe a key aspect of the team and that's the transition and chance creation mm. we brought in Odegaard and I rate Odegaard as a signing I think we got good value for him but he was with us for the last six months of last season and although he did improve us and that's my opinion um, I think he didn't take us to the next level and that's not on him I didn't expect Odegaard to take us to the mm. next level I expected him to be an improvement on what we had which he was but going into the the new season this season with only him as the acquisition it's underwhelming and and some of the same problems we saw last season are coming back to haunt us we've got one goal in four games <laughs> um, and that goal a lot of people have called it lucky including me and that's not you know a negative against the team I think we deserve to win that game on chances created but that goal did come in a lucky manner and you know some will say that's what you need to kickstart your season and that's what Oba might need to kickstart his form again which is true but I think when you look overall mm. at the past year or two it is a big concern then massive concern and I think you know the amount of the amount of goals Unai Emery got out of Aubameyang 31 yeah. goals Lacazette player of the season creativity at times it was behind with Ozil and Ramsey who were no longer there but Martin Odegaard shows glimpses that he can be a good footballer my problem with Smith Rowe Saka Pepe to a certain degree who I'm actually a big fan of and of course Odegaard is the lack of assists the lack of goals and I don't think it is down to the lack of their quality I think it's the way that we're set up I'm so frustrated with this Arteta defensive cautious that, yeah. do you know what I mean I just think he's so cautious now and I think Pepe for example I still think he's one of our most threatening players yeah. I really do I think if Norwich come off that pitch they would have gone we were worried about Saka and, uh, and Aubameyang we did not do our homework on Pepe he was running riot I completely agree you he know? was probably our most aggressive attacker against Norwich 100% he was and I think that when you look at his numbers you know towards the end of last season I think he deserves a little bit more credit I understand the criticism the frustration his first touch I thought was poor to be fair a couple of times against Norwich but actually when he drives at defences I think you are threatening mate you yeah. are the most threatening player and if you wasn't for him we would have drew nil nil because I know Aubameyang put the goal in but that was all to do with his creativity yeah no I completely agree with that um love for the love people there's nearly a thousand people here I just want to say I've just pinned my channel and Lee Judges and Dan's channel in the chat so you know support the channels go and subscribe I'm I'm less than 200 away from 50k oh nice one you man. are rising fast catching yeah, well, up well I don't know not that far yet yeah but we're but in a there, short man. space of time you know <laughs> doing your thing over there it's, it's to be honest, like I said last time it's a quality channel so far and a lot Cheers, of good man. content coming out of it a lot of good people coming out of it too so people make sure you go and support Lee and Dan's channel Lee Judges TV pinned in the top with my channel there 
like I said, I'm 200 away from 50k. If it can happen in, on this, you know, make on it this happen, news people. Daily, Come on, make it happen, people. <laughs> Let's have a celebration later. Um, Arteta did come out today, press conference. Um, part of the press conference, there was a little interview released on um, Arsenal.com. I want to read through it, Dan. Go for it. Go for it. Let me just see how long it is. I think I'm going to read through it in parts, and we'll kind of have a conversation about it as we go um the, it begins and he says life brings you things and you cannot decide it there are certain things that you cannot control what is coming to you is coming for a reason sometimes we don't want to see it but it's coming for a reason and it's probably for the right reason <laughs> i'm glad you laughed man because i'm confusing myself here as i speak but let me just read the next one then it's about how you take it and how you respond to that the way that everyone around me responded is the way that i responded that's why it's been fine <laughs> Listen, when, a... when, I, when I hear stuff like this and people say it's, but there's, it's not an old saying but you know when people tell you when things are going bad for you and you start to get nervous you start talking in riddles and you don't start to believe what you're saying yeah I don't know what he's talking about there that's exactly I mean Dan I read this before you come in and I thought to myself I have, I, I have to read it with Dan to, to make sense of it but you can't help me there I mean listen it's hard for anyone to help what he's meaning there what he's trying to say I think is he doesn't know what's going to happen that's basically what he's saying and none of us do yeah. so he's not really given us any anything there he's just sort of saying he doesn't know what's going to happen and when he talks about we can't control that's so wrong he exactly. can control what's about to happen to him by winning football games because once you win football games Turkish all that pressure comes off of you yeah. it, it does it, it just cures all because yeah. you start winning football games he isn't going to get sacked so he can control that because at the moment we're seeing this cautious defensive football and at times glimpses of creativity that don't really come off if he allowed those players to just express themselves and show some flair perfect example would have been against Norwich yeah then I think we would have seen more of a, oh, do you know what? Okay, this is a new team. We're starting to see some tr passing in triangles now, high intensity, off the ball pressure, everyone trying, they're playing for the manager, they're clubbing together. And I just saw glimpses of it, just not enough. So he can control it. So what he's saying there is, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just a load it's, of shit. It's hard to make sense <laughs> of it, people. Yeah. We'll try in, but I'm going to continue. He goes on. And, and this is a bit more easier to understand. He said, it's tough because it hurts, because you want to see something different. But what you want is not always what happens things happen for a reason and maybe what is happening had to happen and it's going to be really good for the club and really good for myself and everybody experienced in that situation we have to believe that you know what i was wrong in saying that maybe it's easier to understand because again that last bit you know really good for myself and everybody experienced in that situation this hasn't been good for me as an <laughs> arsenal fan dan you know not just the last two years but the last 10 plus so uh, i'm kind of He's not talking in a condescending manner here, but he's, again, and it's not only him that does this. Edu did this last week and the Cronkays do this whenever they come out and talk. But it's like they ignore the wrongdoings of the past. Mm -hmm. They ignore times where they can, you know, have a change, make some sort of an impact, which is a transfer window, for example. And then they talk as if it never happened. They talk as if this is where it starts, forget the past. Mm. It's starting to sound like politicians, Edu and Arteta. You know, yeah. they're, they're talking around the main problem here. I'd much rather him come out. I'd have a lot more respect for him and say, do you think we're happy with how we're playing? No. This is what we're going to do to try and change it for the fans and for this football club to move forward. And this is what we're going to do against Burnley, against Tottenham moving forward. And I don't want, expect him to come out and start talking game plans and stuff like that. But just in a nutshell, what do you think has gone wrong so far? Yeah. And what are you going to do to change it? We don't get that with him. It's all talking in riddles and it's all nonsense stuff. I mean, when I saw him come out against Norwich and give that press conference about how this has been best the best seven, 10, day, yeah, 10 days, this guy's just won the FA Cup. With the, with the club as a player and as a manager yeah. and he thinks this is the best time what beating Norwich 1-0 is the best I think he's time. overselling a learning curve in a sense obviously Crazy. It's, it's dire times for us and the best way you you know you can look at it is you learn more of the negatives than the positives but when you have a fan base that, that's been through so much negatives for longer than you've been here it's hard to talk to us in this way and manner I agree and, and have us accept it do you know what I mean? Um, we can't forget the past. He also goes, when I was a player, I made a decision in my career because I had a personal issue with my parents. I decided to go Real Sociedad, former club, and that was tough because I had other opportunities, but I wanted to be at home next to them. I suffered, I didn't play. I was on the bench and always said that this was a key moment in my career to have more success after. I don't know how you measure success, 
but to enjoy more, to go to bigger clubs and do that, that was the right moment. And again, I feel like he's using an incorrect comparison here. He's essentially saying he went to Real Sociedad for family reasons, and, and I get that, you know, family comes first, you've got priorities in life. But he said that was a catalyst for the success he found later in his career at other clubs. So that comparison tells me that, you know, you might have your learning experience, work experience at Arsenal Football Club, but maybe this learning curve for you bodes better for the next teams you have in the future. I can't see how this directly correlates to... It, it doesn't mean anything to me that apart from I'm going to make the same mistake I did when I was a player because I ended up at a better club. Yeah. So basically what he's saying to all the fans is it doesn't matter that it's going wrong for me now. I'm early in my career and I will end up at Barcelona as the manager one day. Do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. That could be what he's meaning there for a comparison. So I don't really understand how he's trying to translate this or... or, or find the telepathy between himself and the fans or a connection because that to me is nonsense what he's talking about currently <laughs> nonsense definitely um we have zachariah here big up everyone in the chat let me just get some super chats and he says i only think Kronke is spending because of the hbo show it's a pr stunt won't be surprised if he appears often in it he's gonna mug us all off what hbo show the amazon means he means oh, is amazon, that on HBO? Yeah. Okay. Means amazon okay. yeah oh is that what it is well maybe maybe well even if this you know even if the spending we had in the summer was um fueled by this show and this documentary it, it hasn't exactly started off well has mm. it um i don't actually think Kronke cares about the image um from the documentary because i feel like if he cared about the image of the club you don't need a documentary to to see what's happened to us and see how far we've fallen and see that it's happened under his ownership whether minority ownership or majority do you think he cares I, about the image? I of the could club? not agree with you more, mate. If he has to sit down and watch an Amazon documentary to work out what's going on at the club that he actually owns and that he could go and watch every game if he wants to, yeah. he hasn't done that for 15 years. Why is he going to sit down and watch Bro. that? I don't think he cares about where we go, <laughs> because if he did, we would have won something in this league by now. Yeah, exactly. 15 <laughs> so, years and counting, yeah. mate. Um, Carl says this is just pure bullshit PR being fed to us by Kronke. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling of that. And this last paragraph kind of nails down that feeling. Um, Arteta says, I can really see the light. I'm telling you, I'm very positive most of the time. I've seen the light and I can see bright lights. There can be bumps in the road within that light, but I can see a lot of light. A lot of lights in there, mate, you know? Mm. Yeah, any more lights in that in that paragraph? And I don't know, but he well, sees light. I don't, see, I don't see it as anything but dark times for this football club it's at the mad, moment. So it? I don't know what lights he's looking at, bro. You know what? It's like these that are also football club, they, they get the aura from Twitter and they see a lot of negativity. So they come out with positivity. They see a lot of people talking about dark times. So they say, let's put light seven times in a paragraph. It's like they just, <laughs> it's all wordplay to me. Massively so, mate. And, you know, I listen to interviews like that and I just think, where are we going then? Because that doesn't show me any direction from management or any leadership whatsoever. It just tells me that he's pretty confused at the moment. He believes that yes, it's tough times, but he will come out of them. But he's got to again, start showing us actions because when he first came, everybody was impressed by what he said in the press conferences. I've, I've started to see his press conferences become more of a, more of a joke. Yeah. I think he's a journalist dream of what he trips himself up with. And now he's becoming a clown. I mean, what is that press conference? I'd rather him not bothered. I'd rather him just come out before the game and tell, told us what, what the team news yeah. is. So oh, over the madness. past 10, 14 days, Dan, we've had two interviews from Edu on the same day, one Sky Sports, <laughs> one Arsenal, and two interviews, okay, two press conferences from, from Arteta that, you know, rolls off that Edu interview. I, I classed this one, paragraphs today, and I classed the one, you know, prior to the Norwich game as them selling us another dream. Yeah, man, we've been sold a dream for, well, under this ownership, in my opinion, um, and previous ownership, because we were sold a dream to go to the Emirates. Yeah. We were sold a dream that it's okay to finish top four because of the, what the kids that we've got in the team. We're being sold a dream now that this is a new regime, even though it's the same owner, by the way. We're supposed to be trusting a process under the same owner. Can you imagine? <laughs> but do you know what I mean? And, we're supposed, and then there's fans out there that are gullible enough to say, well, I trust it. Why don't you? Yeah. Well, I don't trust it because I don't like the guy. The guy's shown me no ambition for the last 15 years. And these people that are coming into it are either yes men or novices. So I don't see us moving forward. Name me another director of football that spent that much money and then had to come out a week later and explain why. Imagine. And <laughs> why and how and what's going on. <laughs> this is absolute madness. It's amazing how many people fail to see the, pup, um, fail to see the, the, the hand behind the puppet. That's yeah, you is. know it, bro. Yeah, you man, know. you know it. You know it. It's, it's a shame. I'm with you. Essentially, in an ideal world, Dan, we all turned on Kronke before we turned on Wenger. 
even though Wenger protected Kronke and even though Wenger played into his hands and I mm-hmm. believe Wenger in the end chose you know the ownership and, and, and you know wage increases over the fans and true ambition the ideal scenario would have been us ignoring you know Wenger siding with them and going straight for the head mm. but that didn't happen and I'm shocked that it hasn't happened since. Mm. I'm shocked that, okay, Wenger's one thing, but Emery and Arteta, you know, they have no substance at Arsenal. They didn't create great times. So why can't we see that, number one, should we have even put them in the position they're in? And number two, who's making these decisions? The same people that made the decisions prior. 100%, mate. And this is why my fingers have always been pointing at the ownership. And everybody says, oh, but you can't blame the ownership. Kroenke's giving us money. Yeah. Kroenke doesn't pick the team. I understand that the results are to do with Mikel Arteta, and that's why I don't like the guy. But I wouldn't have put him in the job in the first place. So I'm not expecting miracles from this dude. He's never managed anybody. He's not even been at Wigan, Bolton or Blackburn. You know what yeah. I mean? He's gone straight into Arsenal. So, you know, on the one hand as well, people will say to me, and I know they've said it to you as well, we're not going to get Conte. But on the same breath, they'll laugh when you say, I fancy Graham Potter then, because I, I see a style of play. He's not good enough. Everything dismissive. Hang on a minute. Lost, well, he was keep Arteta then. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody else out there then, apparently, that's better than this guy. This is where we are. We're stuck with him, and we're here to the end of the season. Madness. Yeah. The Madness. same person can dismiss both ends of the argument, which is mad to me. Unbelievable. You know? So what do we do then? Do exactly. You know what, I mean? what, what do you want us to do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crazy. Um, big up Primzy, AFC. Is this the Primzy that's on the channel now and doing interviews after games? If it is, big up you, man, because I've seen a couple of your interviews. You're doing your thing. Good opinions. He says, Arteta oh, out. He ain't ready to manage Arsenal just yet. He might in the future, but not now. If we want to aim for the top, we need an elite manager. Well, Dan just mentioned Conte there. I've insinuated that it might be the right man at the wrong time. With Arteta, we don't fully know yet whether he's going to be a good manager, whether he is a good manager. Mm. And I don't think Arsenal is the playing ground to find that out. No, no, 100%. And, you know, when we were linked with Ancelotti or Arteta and Everton were linked with Ancelotti and Arteta, I really believed it was going to be the other way around. I thought Everton, it might have been a good time for them to come into what was a lot of money that they've been spending. And then they got Ancelotti they're showing more ambition because you know what they did? They went and got Rafa, who would have 100% yeah. had over Mikel Arteta. And now he's getting, what's he turned uh, <laughs> Townsend and Demari Gray into ballers all of a sudden, do you know what I mean? So that's what he could have done with us, but everybody says it's the players whenever I speak to people. Well, now it's not. It's not the players anymore. This is a Mikel Arteta side. Let's see what he can do. Obviously, Burnley coming up is going to be interesting because it's a game that we've struggled the last two two uh, games under with with this manager. They play a completely different style of football to Norwich, so this is going to be a tough game. And you know, I I, I feel it's going to test these players. Ramsdale is going to have a test if he keeps in goal because it isn't going to be it's going to be long balls in, crosses coming in, all that kind of stuff. Ben White's going to get tested in the air again. Let's see what he does. Yeah, this is all going to be question marks again for the manager because this is his team. And that's uh, and that reality for me set in against Norwich. Not that, you, not that my opinion on Arteta changed at, during that game because I've been very you know vocal about Arteta not being good enough. But I think we've got bigger fish to fry at the club. But I've also continued to say Arteta shouldn't be Arsenal manager. That's my stance. It's been my stance for a while. But the Norwich game, I looked at the lineup and I said to myself, from top to bottom in that starting eleven, there's not one player. I blame for the decline of Arsenal Football Club. There's not mm. one player I look at and say, look at the mistakes he's made over the years. Why is he playing today? And that leads me to Arteta because mm. we didn't see a better performance. And yes, it's only that first game we've had them all in. But now when I look at a lineup and I'm actually quite intrigued by the lineup, which is the first time in years, I'm actually quite excited by mm. a lineup, which is the first time in years. It must be a managerial issue that's 100%, failing. Hundred percent, hundred percent, mate. And you know, Unai Emery wasn't given this much backing, in my opinion. You know, he wasn't given mm-hmm. Thomas Party when he wanted him, Ben White when he wanted him, Gabriel when he wanted him. He was told to stick with Socrates and Mustafi, and he got them to fifth place, one point of fourth, and to the Europa League final with Socrates and Mustafi instead of Gabriel and Ben White. You know, they had Iwobi and Mkhitaryan Imagine, yeah. instead of Saka and Martinelli and Smith Rowe. So, you know. It worries me with Saka and Smith Rowe Turkish because we're putting a lot of pressure on these young lads. And they he, should not and be playing already, the game. Already, and this is what I didn't want, Dan. This is why in the summer, when I tweet things like we're signing young players, you know, players that are not experienced, and we're giving number 10 to Emil Smith Rowe and look out for Saka because he'll have two years left next summer. In the past week, I've seen online statistics coming out about Saka's last goal in the last however many games. Emil Smith Rowe hasn't got a goal and an assistant. 
listen, this is the club mm. doing it to them. Mm -hmm. I know, listen, the nature of Twitter and the nature of the social media and online, you know, fans and, and, and you know, opposition fans is like that. But we know it's like that. Mm. So don't put our youngsters out to, to dry. You know, 100%. I feel like that could be the start of, you know, the, not the media, but fans kind of highlighting Emil Smith and Saka a lot more than they should in terms of negativity, in terms of productivity. I've seen it happening and it's wrong. And I think that the lack of playing style is an issue. I don't see a playing style. And that's affecting the, the forward line. I really believe that because Unai Emery, although leaked some goals, we did play attractive style of football. Yeah. yeah? We were quite similar to the uh, Arsene Wenger style in, a, in, in some sense of it. But we had a lot more of a modern play, I yeah. felt, under Rune Emery. Now, he did have to go because the fans lost him. And in fact, he lost the players. And when you lose the players, you have to go. But that does not excuse the fact that this guy, although be it people say uh, these, these guys are playing for him, I don't see a playing style. There's no progress. I don't see goals. It's not attractive to watch. It's very mm. negative and cautious. So why am I going to watch this game at the moment? This is what I'm getting to the stage of. And when I look at those youngsters like Saka and Smithrow, I look at those stats, 18 games, no assists, no goals. I think, sorry, one assist, yeah, no goals. Yeah, one assist, that's it, yeah. Um, I think, is that Saka's fault? Or is it a combination of the pressure that's being put under him and the lack of playing style at Arsenal? Smith Rowe, likewise, he yeah. came in and he was forced to come into that game against Chelsea mm -hmm. the Boxing Day. Since then, he's been one of our, our, our better players. But actually, when you look at him being one of the better players and you look at his numbers, you know there's a problem at Arsenal because he's yeah, not doing it, is he? Dan, you know, you, and again, I'm, as we talk, and I love you coming on the show and, and, and sharing you know, the news daily with you because you know we're very similar thinkers, mm. but it's also eye-opening too. I mean, you look at January and you look at Saka going on the right and Emil Smith Rowe coming into the number 10 and the improvement we made. Okay, it wasn't a massive improvement, but it was an improvement. Now, that six months from January, or that five months from January to May, we all look at it as these young players have come in and they've helped steady the ship or they've helped kind of, you know, settle it down a little bit. And they've given us something to look forward to. In the summer, it's the club's responsibility now to take that pressure off mm -hmm. them and go into the new season with them behind, not, not necessarily behind in a positional sense, but behind in a leadership experience, role model, go-to guy type of sense. So I'm not saying Saka should have had a player in front of him this season. What I'm saying is we shouldn't be looking to Saka and Emil Smith for as much as we are this season. I agree. And, and, you know, and when you start a new season with the same players that the back end of last season have made a little name for themselves, well, Saka started before that, made a little name for themselves, and then Saka had a good Euro tournament too, the fans of opposition clubs will look at it and say well you know they're good young players but when the season starts and you take three losses in your first three games those good young players are, they're, they're looking at those good young players to see what they're producing they're the ones we're looking at now come on then you're the young player now did we do that in 2004 with Fabregas and Van Persie or 2004 2005 no we didn't because we had leaders on the pitch we don't have that now yeah. you know Aubameyang and Party are very very good footballers but are they leaders mm -hmm. they're not are they so we have a situation where we have in my opinion one leader in Kieran Tierney who is our most decorated player now that David Luiz has left which is laughable really so yeah with Celtic all of the stuff yeah. he's won crazy so you look at that and think wow um so we're lacking leadership quality when Fabregas and Van Persie come through they had them all didn't they Vieiras yeah, they had yeah. Henri's they had Burkamps we don't have that now when Fabregas and Van Persie come through they then become the leaders for Wilshire and Ramsey when they come through yep. now then players have gone yep. Saka and Smith Rowe come through with Granite Xhaka and Lacazette and Bellerin and Ozil's and that you think I don't want them learning off them yeah, yeah. Like, I want to see some leadership from this club and I've not seen it from top to bottom mate and it's a worry and one of them mentioned I don't know if it's Wilshire Fabregas I think it's one of them two that mentioned you know I came in with legends leaving that helped me but then the next generation are coming in without those legends mm -hmm. without that experience and leadership you know i keep on saying patrick vieira is the legend and captain he is to this club partly because of tony adams and yep. what tony adams passed on to him not only in terms of leadership and he he, he made vieira know what it, it is to be an arsenal player an arsenal captain you know and how much the fans mean stress here says there was a funny comment saying, yeah, traffic lights to the lights that Mikel Arteta was talking about. <laughs> um, Shres says, Mikel says he is seeing bright lights like the singer The Weeknd. What stuff is he on? Well, you know, we, we, who was it John Henry that said, what are they smoking over there? They still might be smoking it. Hearing a lot on Charlie Patino. Thoughts? Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a great positive to move on to because I'm very excited by Charlie mm. Patino, but then at the same time, I don't want to contradict what I just said about Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe and, and start asking for him to be 
implemented. I do actually want to see him against Wimbledon, mm. but my worry is now is not the right time for a youngster to be put into the first team because this club will then turn and say, we don't need a central midfielder. He's going to be ready. My biggest worry is that he's going to come in at the wrong time. Now, I've liked what I've seen with this kid, but I remember liking Dan Crowley. I remember liking J. Emmanuel Thomas. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember liking Fran Marido after Fabregas oh, had kind of come Marido. through. I was thinking, these kids Oof. are unbelievable. Yeah. I remember liking Arturo, Arturo Lupoli, Lupoli. Hey. <laughs> Quincy Awusu <laughs> Abe. Yeah. There's been so many over the years that have come through and you think to yourself, wow, these are all going to be stars. Let's just calm it down a bit. However, what I do see with this kid is somebody who's so comfortable on the ball yeah. for his age unbelievable ability for a 16 year old I believe he's 16 so I think he's 17 is he 17 yeah so you know we're talking about a guy who at Fabregas's age you know was getting into the first team because he had leaders around him throwing Charlie Pitino in next to Granite Chaka you know is not what I want to be seeing throwing Charlie Pitino in with Saka and Smith Rowe I don't think it's a great thing yet. So I agree, 100%. you know what I mean. I think we need to be careful how we nurture this kid and how we how we implement him into the team. I've got no problem with him coming on for half hour against Wimbledon. Yeah, absolutely yeah. no but problem I'd like with that. To at be all. next to party, exactly that. I don't want him coming on next to El Nini. You know yeah, what I mean? Or Lukonga, or, or, yeah, exactly. You, you want and you you want Patino to be next to someone that Patino looks at and says, "This is a top player next to me and a, and someone that can protect me." And I, and I think party is the only one we have in the middle. I think you're right and. There's that old saying, isn't it? If you're good enough, you're old enough. And that's honestly, be I, I believe that. And I stand by that. I said that with Guendouzi. I said it with Fabregas. If you're good enough, you're old enough. And I believe personally, Charlie Patino could be that next one that's coming through. They believe that he's the best kind of starter that's come through uh, the colony. So yeah. I think when you look at that raving reports, you think, where do we go from here now? Do we chuck this guy in? Because, you know, it could be a position that we need next to Thomas Party, Or do we sort of say, let's just hold fire here. You know, yeah. we've got Party Lukonga. Let's see what Patino can do. I know that a lot of people have seen goals from this lad and seen him going forward. He's actually, I believe, more of a kind of holding central dictator, midfielder. central midfielder. Well, that's, yeah, so, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, left-footed, um, very comfortable on the ball. And when you look at players like that coming through and look, they look that, that special glimpse, I would like to see this kid because I've seen glimpses of some of the other kids around the world football at the moment that are a little bit older than him just starting to come onto the scene and they look special Jude Bellingham Phil Foden yeah. uh, Pedri from Barcelona and Spain Camavinga recently Camavinga well, yeah. so this kid is obviously being like hyped up massively now I don't know if he's going to reach those heights yet even but let's see what this guy's got and it, it would be good to see 20 minutes of him against Wimbledon just to see what he's got in the first team now because he's been training with us hasn't he the first yeah. team so yeah he has been a lot of rumours that he will you know play some part in that Wimbledon with the game and, and I agree with Dan you know I think it's just as much about protection as it is about playing time for me with Patino he's 17 I just checked he's turning 18 in October okay and um, October the 17th so still very young so 17 turning 18 this season 18 turning 19 22 23 maybe then we start seeing him in the FA Cup and so on and and then maybe the season after mm. the more experienced side with more leaders in it in an ideal world <laughs> then we bring him in but you know it is what it is we'll see so I just thought I missed something here in the chat. Patino is the real deal, um, says Chris. <laughs> the man said Patino's the next El Nene. Let's hope not. <laughs> Let's hope not. But listen, we've had youngsters before that haven't, you know, kicked on to where we would have thought they would have because of some of the hype created from young. Now, I believe the hype about Patino is real. Mm. But at the same time, let as fans, you know, take a step back and make sure the first team and the club are moving in the right direction when, once he comes into it. Yeah, and I think you have to be realistic about the potential of some of these individuals because, you know, and, and I've had sort of, you know, 30 years as an Arsenal fan, so I've had the pleasure of going to Highbury and the Emirates and seeing some of the youth, youth come through. Yeah. And we've seen them, we've already named some that were at Highbury, like Lupoli and Quincy Owusu Bay, and some that have moved in the Emirates era that haven't made it. And that's why I've always kind of, you learn from the mistakes of, oh my God, this guy's going to be amazing. I remember David Bentley come on the scene and I thought, this guy's going to be the next bird camp. Do you, Do you know what I mean? A pennant. A pennant. Unbelievable. It came through and we're thinking, look at this unbelievable youth academy we got and we have to be realistic about it i do think however the youth that's coming through of the last few seasons has been impressive you know it has been and they've all come through together at a similar time some of them ain't gonna make it in an arsenal shirt but some of them will go on to have very good careers and what's funny is two years ago if we sat here dan and we asked you know who's the next youngsters to come through i think 
me and you probably would have said Reese Nelson and Joe Willock, but mm. here we are with Emil Smith Rowe and Saka. There we go. That's you know, how quickly it can change. And that shows that we don't really know as much as we'd like to know. I'd like to think we know about the academy and the youngsters coming through and and their ceiling and level of potential mm. because it comes down to mentality and character too. Mm. Quality is one thing. But when you take that step up, when you open yourself to, you know, social media, to more eyes, when you're in the first team for a club the size of Arsenal, mm. that's when pressure comes. That's when, you know, mentality and character come into play. So I hope Patino is, you know. Well, we do, we do it with our current players as well, don't we? Do you know what I mean? We hype them up, like Tommy Asu, for example. Yeah, Let's yeah. take his performance. You think, oh my God, this guy's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I thought Danny Sabahs was unbelievable when he played against Kalasinac's Burnley. Kalasinac's first yeah, game. Kalasinac, I that. thought, what a tank he is yeah. running down the left. And it ain't worked out for him. So we just got to just reserve a little bit of judgment for now and just make sure that we, we, we see it consistently in this team. Zelalem, that's the one I was talking Zelalem, about. Zelalem, that's oh. him. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. him. And that, that hurt me over the years. Fabregas hurt me, Wilshire hurt me, and then you have the, you know, the Zella Lems and the other young players that didn't kick on and come mm. into play. That's why I'm very hesitant with Saka and Emil Smith Rowe. Not to say that they're going to play at the highest level because they obviously are and they have a high ceiling, but because I want them to play at the highest level and continue developing at Arsenal. And I'm worried that that won't happen if we continue moving in the wrong way off the pitch. Well, as you already said that Saka's got two years and we know what happens after two years. You should be, if we've learned our lessons, um, talking about new contracts. And, yeah. you know, I believe Saka and Smith Rowe are happy at Arsenal and they believe that they want to be here because they love the club. But they will not love the club if we keep going in this direction, if we finish outside of Europe again, if we look like we're not going to be any uh, with any silverware. And then he's saying, do you know what, Jack Grealish, who I know quite well from England, has gone to Man City. He's born in it. You know, Phil Foden's unbelievable. I'm, I'm up there with the Mason Greenwoods and the Phil Foden's, uh, yeah. Saka is. And he's going to be looking at what they're doing. Even Jude Bellingham, do you know what I mean? Killing yeah, it in yeah. Dortmund. I'm a massive fan of that kid and I look at Saka and I think you need to keep we need to keep him happy and the only way to keep players happy is to win stuff mate two years left in the summer Saka that's scary a, that's, that's a position the club shouldn't be in you know but it is what it is um, a good point made here send Patino on loan to a Salzburg or Leipzig I guess that yeah you know that, that that's an option maybe January or the summer I think we've missed out on it now Maybe it's something we should have done in the summer just gone, but there's a lot of things we should have done the summer just gone yep. that we didn't. So maybe it was on the list somewhere and they didn't <laughs> get down to it. Um, Oscar says, how can we expect the board to sign experienced players when they are terrible? The last time we tried, Louise, Willian, etc. Good point. It is a good point. And uh, what, did both of those names come under Edu? Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, they did. And I think it's something that we need to learn from. You know, I've just said that we need to be learning from this Saka situation, but we haven't done, have we? We've Lacazette, we've Eddie, we've Chambers, yeah. we've Elneny, we've Kalasinac. They're all on one year left. Now, majority of them do need to go, but they should have been sold last summer. Why are they still here? Do you know what I mean? So the it's other thing we know is unbelievable. You could have got 10 mil for him. Just Goodness accept the money. Sake. Just accept the money, man. I mean, there's there's offers that were coming in for players I would have just accepted just to get rid of them. Even Shaka. I would have, I have got rid of him. to 15. That's what he's worth for I me. He's not good enough. For Bellerin when Inter yeah, wanted him as well. Yeah, it, do you know what I mean? This is the problem. We're being too. It, it, it's it, it's just bad business for yeah. me. But the other thing on touching on that in terms of what we're going to do with with some of these these players and what we're going to do with with stuff moving forward now, learning from our mistakes from experienced players like Willian, like Kim Karlstrom, like David Luiz, like Mikael Silvest. These need yeah, to be yeah. removed on now. We need to be past that now. The experienced players, as much as you say they're experienced, they actually have to be good footballers as well. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? None of this risk taking of. Yeah. 35 year olds look at look, okay Louise Willian is two two examples of you know bad experience we've bought and I, and I look at other clubs and I see Thiago Silva at Chelsea yeah and I think to myself they let Louise go one year and got Thiago the next year why because Thiago is you know he was the boss of the Brazil defense and yep. PSG he was the boss when they was together there and in general not all experience is good experience. So just having someone that's 32 or 33 years of age in your team, you know, you can't say we've got experience there because mm -hmm. the experience needs to be good. It needs to be valuable. With Thiago Silva, valuable. Even with Edison Cavani. Mm -hmm. I think Cavani last season was valuable to the youngsters like Greenwood and Rashford and whoever else, finishing especially. Yeah. And yeah, I think I agree those are the types you need to be going for. And also it's about what's up in your head as well. Do you know what I mean? Your yeah, mentality course, has to yeah. be it. So you look at the technical ability of somebody like Mesut Ozil, for example, right? All the technical ability in the world, mentally weak, yeah. a weak man, right? But you look at somebody like James Milner or Jordan Henderson, technically nowhere near as good as Mesut Ozil, but you'd have him in your team over Mesut because they've got it up there. And that's yeah. what we need is that experience and leadership and something Turkish that I've been so frustrated with since the Gazidis and Kronky 
era, stat DNA does not tell you what you got up there. It tells you what you can do with your feet. It tells you how technically gifted you are. How what's your passing ability like? How good are you at dribbling? Yeah. How good are you at taking on players? How many how many you know balls have you won in the air? Whatever it be, that might be great but they can't have the mentality to take us forward. And that's why we've seen weak players coming through. Players like Bellerin saying, oh, Sanchez wanted to win too much. The yeah. minute he said he wanted to win too much, I wanted Bellerin gone. <laughs> yeah? yeah? So that's what we Same. need to try. And that's what we need to try and change. Same, the mentality and atmosphere in the dressing room is not one of winners. I think you could see that over the years with some of the comments. Stress again says, Turkish and Dan, I really don't rate Emil Smith, Rowe and Pepe. I prefer Odegaard and Martinelli. Emil Smith, Ron Pepe aren't there yet, physically, mentally, and just lack the X factor. Well, I think the, the you know what, I'm, I'm gonna agree with you Shres in terms of preferring Odegaard to Emil Smith Rowe. Um, Pepe and Martinelli is a bit more of a difficult one for me because I understand what you're saying, but I think if you give me a top form Pepe, which we haven't seen at Arsenal much of anyway, over a top form Martinelli, which we haven't seen much of because he's young and hasn't had the chances yet, it's hard to make an informed, you know, de debate about it. But you said they aren't there yet. So I guess you also admit that they could get there. And if that's the case, then, you know, having players like Odegaard in front of Emil Smith Rowe or, or battling with Emil Smith Rowe will be good for Emil Smith Rowe. I, I, I don't think any of those four players are there yet. <laughs> I honestly don't think any yeah, of those yeah. four players are there yet. So I think yeah, it's I hard to compare the four of them. I think Martinelli ceiling's higher than any of them, but he needs game time. And this yeah. manager doesn't seem to want to play him for whatever reason. Pepe, I feel, has been mismanaged. And this inverted wing-back thing is killing me because it's isolating Pepe. I want to see Pepe in front of goal, not stuck out and wide on the right-hand side, cutting in on his left, which is so predictable. Everybody can see it. Then he's got to drive past three or four defenders to have the shot and the goal. <laughs> I don't want to see that. With Smith Rowe and Odegaard, very different players. Smith Rowe wants to hold on to the ball a lot and be a bit selfish, and I kind of like that, if I'm honest, because he's driving towards defences. Odegaard is that tricky player and that technical, technically gifted yeah. one. So you've got four very different players there. So I think if you were to play Martinelli and Odegaard over Smith Rowe and Pepe, you'd have a different team. Dynamic, but yeah. <laughs> the problem with his manager is it won't be a different team because we've seen the same tactics with different players. I went Too to rigid. Brentford and I saw Balogun and Martinelli playing like Lacazette and Aubameyang yeah. did. Yeah. Poorly. Yeah. So he's not, not utilising he is not their skill sets assets, he's not yeah. nah. got a comment here saying Wilshire over Jack and obviously Arteta dismissed <laughs> the Wilshire back to Arsenal as a player claims training but, but that's the door it is open. Yeah, we're going to get yeah, into yeah. some of the comments he made anyway big up everyone in the chat there's 2,500 people here we're not even on 500 likes yet hit the like button get it up to a thousand likes before the video ends and me and Dan will be back again next week the promise is there so make sure it happens <laughs> before the show ends and oh yeah now there's 2,005, 2,600 here. There's a pinned message in the live chat. One of the links is Dan's channel with Lee Judges. Obviously you all know Lee Judges, you know, regular legend on AFTV. <laughs> but Dan and Lee have got a very good channel going. It's been going for the last couple of months. Make sure you go over there, subscribe. I've been on there already. I will be on there again. And like I said before, I'm less than 200 subscribers away from 50K on my own channel. That link is also there. Shameless plugging from me, but Nah, come on people, let's do it, come, come on. on people, let's get it, let's get him up to 50. <laughs> and we got a super chat from Mark. More and more I am worried about Mikel Arteta, about what Mikel Arteta will do more damage at the club the longer he is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I agree with that, I agree with that. And I think we've seen already in 20 months, there's no playing style, there's no progress and he needs to show against Burnley that we can win convincingly and he needs a result in the North London derby to start allowing fans to start to change to see where we're going and I can't see that happening I have no faith with this manager mate I really don't and I think it is I said at the start of the show I think it's a matter of when he gets sacked not if I just don't know what game it's going to be yet and I know that's really negative but I'm kind of accepted that because I've seen enough of it it's yeah yeah you know no, I mean? 100% I get you there Oscar again says look at what Conte did to Moses to Kel to Alonso Benitez to Townsend Good managers make players better. Imagine what a good manager would do with some of our players, says Oscar. Amazing point. That is an amazing point because I don't believe this team is as bad as what people make out. West Ham and Leeds and Burnley and, you know, the Everton's and Villas even possibly, West Ham, they would say, do you know what, I'd take the majority of those Arsenal players in my squad. They might not get in the first team because surely five or six of those, those teams I've just mentioned would probably, you know, get into the Arsenal side. Yeah. But this team is not a 12th or 14th or 15th or even 16th place side so with a better manager and i'll say it about man united as well you think man united would do not do better if ollie went and conte come in 
Yes, of course they would. They'd be title challenging. Yeah, I'd be Arsenal very would be then. Exactly. Arsenal yeah. would be in the top uh, six, in my opinion, guaranteed with Conte. Maybe even pushing for the top four if you know results went our way, because that's how highly I rate this guy. So you know, being realistic about things, we need to look at this team and say, is it a 16th place team? No, it's not. Yeah. But the manager is a 16th place manager. So which is the that's the issue for me. Face. Yeah. Big up best in the world as well, man. Love for the love, my guy. I see you everywhere. My channel, this channel. Big up you, man. He said some of the fan base needs to man up and stop accepting mediocrity, Turkish. Hundred well, percent agree. Yeah, hundred percent. I've spot you for that, Dan. <laughs> me and you've been, you know, battling the the good battle for a good few years. Um, Burnley round the corner. We've got about twenty minutes to go in this vid. Two thousand five hundred still here. Arteta and Lacazette. I, I bought this mm. quote out because. Again, it's an interesting one for me. With 10 months to go on his contract, this is not really what I expect to be hearing, but at the same time, what do I expect here? Lacazette said he's fully involved. He will be back to the form that he can achieve, and I'm sure he'll be instrumental in our success. Obviously, that the title today is Lacazette will be back, says Arteta, and that to me is a bit of a funny one because, you know, at a time when I'm seeking a bit more clarity and a bit more ownership of some of the, you know, wrongdoings behind the scenes at the club, I think it's evident to see that with 10 months left on Lacazette's deal, we should have sold him this summer. What do you make of you know Arteta's comments about he will be back and he can achieve? And Do you think there's potential that he gets a new contract at the club? I think, first of all, we should have sold him last summer, not this summer. Agreed, yeah. And if you're not going to sell him last summer, he has to go this summer. Yeah. Because we've kept him now, the reason we've kept him, by the way, is because of the previous regime, sticking him on 182k a week. No one's going to pay yeah. him that, right? So that's why we're stuck with him. As for Marteta's comments, listen, he's not going to come out and say he's not a long-term part of my plan, so therefore he won't play this season. That's just the wrong thing to say. So I expect him to play parts. I don't think he's going to be a regular a striker like he was last year in the season before, but I think he will play a bit part. Now... The reason I think he'll play a bit part is because he is our second best striker behind Aubameyang because yeah. we've still got Eddie there and Balogun's young and need, needed a low move to be fair. If we were going to keep Eddie and Lacquer, we needed to try and get Balogun some games, some minute times. And I think it wouldn't be surprising if Balogun goes to somewhere like Palace or Brighton even in, in January yeah. like on loan. It wouldn't surprise me. And again, it'd probably be six months too late, but yeah. Precisely. Yeah. So we're doing all these things backwards again. <laughs> but Lacazette's comments for me is going to be an interesting one to see what he means by you know, he's going to be a part of it. And is he going to be a part like it was last season? I'm not so sure he will be, mate. And I think it's going to be goodbye in the summer um, on a free transfer, which is madness. It won't be the, yeah, no. won't be the first. It probably no. won't be the last with Kronke's in charge. Um, Abdi here says, we sack our, or a Chelsea fan, obviously, we sack our legend Lampard for 2 cal and look how he improved the team. Arsenal will never be the same with Kronke and Arteta in charge of the club. And I do like when opposition fans can be, you know, no, no bias and no banter with but their they're comments talking because sense I like to hear from yeah, them yeah they're talking sense there listen they had Frank Lampard with the same team Tuchel won the Champions League got them into the top four into an FA Cup final they were ninth, mate I think or were they 10th or 8th or ninth when, yeah. when he took them over they were about a point or two in front of us I think so when Conte took over well, Conte or Tuchel, two, two oh, so yeah, yeah Tuchel. When Tuchel took over, there was yeah, either a point above us, or yeah. it was that like eighth, ninth, or something. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was, it was close. And I thought to myself, this is going to be interesting to see what Chelsea do. And yet again, we didn't learn. And then Villarreal happened; he still didn't get sacked. Conte sitting there sunning it up, you know now, and we're not going to do it. Tuchel was sunning it up. Chelsea jumped and went and got him with that same team. And Frank Lampard was a legend, by the way, at Chelsea. Mikel Arteta is not a legend at Arsenal. But we're still being told, no, we're giving this guy time to see what we're doing. And I don't know how long he's got left, but I don't think it'll be much longer if we don't start picking up three points, mate. Yeah, I don't know how long I got left, mate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know Arteta. Um, Shrest says, AFC DNA is motor-mouth injury-prone players who like their part-time careers like fashion, gaming, more than football. Sell bums like Kolasinac, Xhaka and Bellerin. Well, Bellamy is not here right now, but he will be back next summer like Kolasinac returned this summer. Unbelievable, yeah. man. What is he still doing here? I mean, this guy, I've never seen a left back as bad as this guy. Honestly, man, he was, he's, you know, we've had some poor left backs, mate. But yeah, my what's God. What's funny is in January, you know, the business we done, you know, Ozil's contract termination or yep. payoff, whatever. Then you had Kolasinac go out and loan, mate, then Nas go out and loan. And a couple of other deals done in January. And then 
from about February to May, we had like Arteta and Kroenke and a few others come out and say the size of our overhaul in January was immense, it's unprecedented, all of these buzzwords. Um, you can see we're doing things only for a two or three of them players to return in the summer and I struggle to get rid of them to the point where Kolasinac is back again. <laughs> Kolasinac is back, Bellerin's coming back, we've still got Lacazette and Eddie here. It's, it's a madness really that what is happening at this club and, you know, he talks about bums. I, I think the biggest disappointment of the transfer window was Granit Xhaka. That was the yeah, biggest yeah. disappointment for me because that basically, in Arteta's eyes, prevented us buying a centre midfielder that was an upgrade on Lokonga or an upgrade on Chaka. Because we got Lokonga in, who could be fantastic, I've been impressed, but it wasn't Basuma. It wasn't yes. Frank Kessier. It wasn't Samari who went to Leicester. It wasn't Ibrahim Sangari. It wasn't a beast who was going to take us forward along with Thomas Partey. We got Tranit Shaka and El Nini. <laughs> yeah. oh. So, you know, that was the biggest disappointment for me, I think, because that was the priority signing was a partner for Thomas Pye. That, that's that what was I my said. That and the right back, yeah. Yeah, 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 100%. And Aniva got, well, Tommy Asu in the end. We got end. Tommy Asu, yeah. you know. Some of the positions were covered, you know. I, I didn't think it was a shambles of a window. You know, we got the backup left back, the centre back, the right back. We got the Erdegaard in the creativity. We got the centre midfielder. Yeah. We got the goalkeeper. So we're filling positions. No one was elite. No one yeah, was marquee. Yeah, marquee. You know? I think a marquee signing coming in puts all of the others into the shadow. 100%. And that's where those signings belong, in a sense. In the yeah. shadow of a marquee. So there's not... There, there shouldn't be this much pressure on Ramsdale already. No, you no, know? there shouldn't. No. And that's someone I'm going to move on to next. But before I do, we'll get this super chat in from Alex. Are we generally in agreement that if you take our full squad, we could be a pretty good team in two, three years of experience? However, the issue right now is we cannot challenge. I, I guess, yeah, you're, I mean, I'm in agreement that in two, three years, with the youngsters we have and the potential they have, that we can be a pretty good team in two, three years, but it's not the issue that we can't challenge now. It's more so the issue that they haven't got the right platform, these young players. 100%, it goes back to the lack of leadership and experience that they've got. I think in two or three years time, they'd be so much better learning off of somebody like the Vieiras and Henri's that Fabregas and Van Persie's did. My problem is at the moment, in two or three years time, we could be fantastic, but it's not gonna be under this manager. If we keep this manager for that long, I honestly worry for the future of this football club because we're being controlled at the top by people who have neglected us. Yeah. The board are clueless, the absolute circus in the board. And we've got a novice of a manager who's not getting any direction from up above. And I think I think he's quite arrogant and doesn't actually probably want that because I think he feels he knows best. I don't see any of his coaching staff helping out. They're all just sitting behind him and I don't see any of them move. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so don't. we've got a lot of things wrong, if I'm honest with you. And although I think this team is actually good enough on paper, it does actually need to be coached. Of course, <laughs> so, of course. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I do believe this team is better. I think if you saw... I don't want Arsene Wenger to come back, right? I yeah, do not yeah. want that. We're just going backwards if we do that. But put him in against Burnley, put him in against Spurs and put him in against Brighton and I think you'll see a style of play and I think you'll see attacking football. And we might lose one of them, we might draw one of them, but we play an attacking style because yeah, I know the style of football. Do you know what I mean? Graham Potter, exactly the same. Brighton players, they're playing amazing football. Yeah. I think they're having a great season, by the way. Rafa Benitez, straight away a style. Uh, Dean Smith, a star, whatever. David Moyes, a star. You think Even West Sean Ham's Dyke got a star. Sean Dyke's got a star. He might not like it, yeah, but it's a star. It's a star. So, and you, you know, you think them players are better than Arsenal's? No. No. It's the manager it's the put implementing a style. The style that and there's more no efficient. style. No yeah. style implemented, implemented in 20 months under Arteta, mate. And that's an issue. Big issue. Couple super chats here, one after the other, and they kind of fall hand in hand. One of them says, from Ford, Arteta needs more time. You are too impatient. And Koran says, what if the younger ones want to leave in two, three years? And I, and I say they go hand in hand because Arteta needs more time, but in two, three years, that like Quran said, what if the younger ones want to leave? And that could happen. That could happen <laughs> if I we don't start secure, winning. I, I, as an Arsenal fan, I want to secure the futures of Emil Smith-Rowe and Saka much more than I would Arteta. 100% mate. And you know, people have said it, it's like, do you want Kroenke to go or Arteta to go? The reason I picked Kroenke is because if a new owner come in that had ambition, yeah. he would get rid of Arteta, so he'd be gone anyway. It's like that with the with the, with the the players. Who do I want to go? The manager? Do I want to keep the players? I want to keep the players because I can see the talent there. You know, a tweet come out earlier saying, would you take 90 million for Saka in the summer if he isn't going to sign? And it was just like, I don't want to go down that road again because we've done this before, getting yeah. rid of our best players, Fabregas, Van Persie. Us, exactly. We've just seen you. 150 million pounds spent this summer and it hasn't really done much to improve the first team so I don't believe the money is being spent in the right places so that 90 million is not going to replace a Bakayu Saka anyway yeah. so Definitely you know that for me that's not a good move not with our recruitment team <laughs> that's for sure we've got a few <laughs> more super chats flying in I do want to move on to Ramsdale Leno but we'll get them in 
Um, Say says Barca Arsenal are the same they can't sell like they bought and Oscar back again we have the second youngest team in the whole league does Arteta think this is FM21 FM being football manager <laughs> you can't just buy potential and expect them to perform I can't like that's what I'm like that's on football good. manager that's I sell every old yeah. guy and just bring in the youngsters and I'm exactly. like yeah we move and Shres says lone players will be back like a bad rash <laughs> wait lone players will be back like a bad rash, rash in your bum I don't know about wow, that one, Shrez. I don't, man. I haven't but, had that experience, yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, yeah, my guy. We will, we'll <laughs> he says, they'll irritate you, but if they go away without treatment, you'll be worried as it will come back worse. There you go, a little bit of experience there. Knowledge from his side of things. Um, I want to go on Leno Ramsdale in the last 10 minutes. Hit the like button, people. 500 away from 1,000. Make sure we get that 1,000 before the show ends and subscribe to the channels in the live chat. Let me read out some quotes on Ramsdale Rams and Leno. So Arteta said, we want them to make each other better. We're competing against the opponents, not against each other. For Burn, it is obviously, it is obvious, it's obviously wasn't a pleasing communication when I told him he wasn't playing. Um, I don't know where the rumours of starting against Tottenham come from. I haven't made a decision for Saturday yet, let alone North London derby. And he ends it with, asked why he picked Ramsdale, Ramsdale against Norwich. He said, we had to change something. Aaron has come here to make us better. We needed a result on the day and I decided to play him that sort. That's quite a definitive answer and statement. So he said, we had to change something. So to change a keeper and then to say, Aaron has come here to make us better. Is that Arteta to saying that Ramsdale is the new number one? It kind of smells like it to me. Uh, that's what it sounds like, but I wouldn't take that for granted with this manager because I, I honestly, the stuff he says is, is very up and down. Yeah. But I think it's the right decision, Turkish. And I said to my, my friend earlier, um, we were talking about Arteta, and he said, yo, you've been really harsh on Arteta. I said, I have because I don't like some of the decisions I've seen. This one I really like. I can't, I can't blame the manager for this one because Leno has made it clear, apparently, and I don't know how true this is, but it looks true now that we've seen this, this uh, coming out, that he doesn't want to be here long term. Yeah. So he's not going to sign a new contract. That means you don't play, mate. You are our, now our backup. So if Aaron yeah. Ramsdale is the goalkeeper we're bringing in for £24 million, it means he's playing. It's a good debut against West Brom, a good league debut against Norwich, not that he had too much to do, but let's see the big test now against Burnley. Yeah. If he plays against Burnley, this is going to be a big, big test for him now. And if he does come back in against uh, Spurs, Leno, on Arteta's head, be it. Same with Granit Xhaka, because he'll be play coming back oh, in, trust that's me. That's another question, yeah. yeah. So Do you on his head, he'll be come it. come back in 100%? 100%, mate. It'll be Xhaka and Pai. Let's say Partey Lukonga start against Burnley and we win 4-1. Do you still think Xhaka, Xhaka and Pai? Because this is what this manager does. He has made it very clear by giving uh, Granite Tracker a long-term contract again, which I still think is madness, by the way, um, <laughs> that he's going to be the number one. And I think that... For me, what I loved about the Norwich midfield, although be it, it wasn't an amazing game, there was athleticism in the midfield for the first time in a long time. Because yeah. Lokonga and Maitland-Niles, or some people said Maitland-Niles didn't have a good game. I thought he was fine. Lokonga's fine, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I saw athleticism and I saw forward passing. Granit Xhaka and El Nini is backwards and sideways. I don't want to see that. You know, so Party and Lukonga, I'm hoping play and they have a wicked game yeah. against Burnley and it makes it impossible to drop them both. And I hope Aaron Ramsdale does the same. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I completely agree with that. Um, Arteta did mention, you know, Partey has been in and out of training this week, which is not worrying, but it's interesting because he played the back end of the game against Norwich and I would have thought him playing that indicated that he was ready to play, but maybe there was a setback there, maybe something happened. And We need him, mate. We, we need do. him. We massively need do. him. He's the most important player for us this season, in my opinion. Like I said, if, if you ask Charlie Patino now who he'd want to play with um, if he was to start against Burnley, it'd probably be Thomas Partey. Of course Partey. he would, mate. Hunt, who wouldn't you know? want to play out of, all of, out of those names you want to be yeah, with him don't you exactly uh, big up Will Ricketts Listen, Will it, it feels like you're my burner account with the amount of you know <laughs> things I agree with him on he said if you go to games don't complain protest instead of going to games so if you're going to games and buying kits it is a problem if you are serious about it then act United Chelsea did it hashtag Kronke out and as you saw this season so far, I haven't been to any games. Dan as well, he's joined me on a few watch along so mm -hmm. far. And you'll be joining me again this Saturday yep. against Burnley. You and Lee Judges will be in the building. So, you know, a lot a lot of us fans here have started making that decision and, and, and talking with our feet, I guess. Yeah, I think so. It's a difficult one for me, this one, because I don't go to the football games for the 90 minutes. I go for a lot more. Yeah. So I'm very, very close to my dad. Me and my dad are like brothers, basically, and best yeah. mates. And that, for me, is my way of my release to spend time with him. And we've grown up watching football together. So for me to stop doing that would be 
memories I'm never going to get again because mm-hmm. he's not going to be here one day do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so I would regret that so it's not just the 90 minutes of football what I do agree with though is protesting together and having one voice yeah. and I've said this on this show and other podcasts that it's very very hard to do that with this fan base because they will always chuck something back at you merchandise mm-hmm. leave leave at 70 minutes don't go to games chuck your season ticket in don't buy beers in the ground you know but there's always someone that wants to throw something back at you well I want to do that there's never a okay this is what we're going to do we hate Kroenke we want him out what are we actually going to do about it because I saw it at Everton and that was all I've seen Mm -hmm. and that was a good protest that was and I know me and you were there but the one after that we clapped the bus the one after that it rained so no one turned up and then the one that I went to for the first game against Chelsea was a shambles it was people standing on a roundabout asking what everyone was going on yeah so we can't do something to unite this fan base to get the Kroenkes out so what do we do because there's always I hate this I hate this ownership how can we get them out there's too many people Turkish that want to slate people about look it look at each other rather than yeah, they want to look at each other they're too busy arguing about whether Granit Xhaka should be in the team they're too busy arguing whether why, why me and you were going on AFTV they're too busy why Why did we do we care do you why should people have a podcast and talk about it yeah. there's always this kind of this hatred between it there's always this this divide and this debate and that this fan base is divided all the time yeah. Arteta in Arteta out is now the one so we need something to be united and I'm not saying everyone should have the same opinions as me and you yeah, because yeah. it's the way it is football well, I want everyone have to have balance, different opinions we need to have a balance and it seems that everybody wants the Cronkies out but what do we actually want to do about getting them out not yeah, much exactly, it seems because so. people put other issues ahead of the main issue precisely all the time. That. And, and you know what you said resonates so much with me because listen Dan I was buying fake shirts a long time ago <laughs> a long time before AFTV mm. like you, you'll meet a few of my friends from you know uni times and before that and you, you, you can ask them I was open about buying fake shirts. I was open about it. I've got a fake shirt at home. I think there's Nasri on the back in a bag somewhere because you know how that one turned out. Yeah. And I got a few. That's just something that I decided to do those times. I didn't have a platform. I just looked at what the club was doing and I thought to myself, nah, they're taking the piss. And I thought, why would I spend my hard earned money on this? So I started doing that. And then it came a point where um, a few years ago, well, for a long time now, I've had another friend, a female friend working in um, Adidas and, and over the years, she sent me bits and bobs that come out Arsenal related. And, you know, I wore, for example, that Bruce Bonanno retro remake that came out a few years ago, got sent that, I wore it. Um, I got sent that, was it the, not, not the blue and pink one. I got sent the blue one from a few years before that where it was like a smoky. Yep. And I wore them and I had fans saying to me, look, Look, you're telling people not to buy merchandise, mm. but you're buying it, but I'm not. Yeah. And I even stopped. To this day, she will still ask if I want anything and she'll still, <laughs> you know, send me the odd thing, but I don't want it. I don't want it because I've realized that there's too many fans looking at each other more so than they look at themselves. Mm. And even till this day, people, as much as I've stopped buying merchandise, as much as I don't pay Sky and BT as much as I've done all these things outside and and I've used my platform to kind of galvanize and and get us together people will still pick out but you still go games and you know what else is frustrating is you do all that I stop going to a game someone has my ticket I stop buying a shirt somebody next to me buys it I don't buy a beer in a stadium but everyone else buys rounds it's not one voice it's your opinion I love that you do that but I think everybody needs to do that and that's not going to happen because of the way that we are globally as a fan base people come to the emirates for a day tourist day yeah. they're not even coming to support it so we get into that that kind of where do we go from here situation and i think that you know as much as i agree totally with what you're saying by the way um and i think it's grand i think that's why people like you find it difficult to stick to that because they're like I'm doing this, but what the hell are you not doing? You're moaning about Cronky and you're buying a scarf, waving it around your head saying Cronky out. That's an issue to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's where we go from here as a fan base. You know what I mean? Very difficult. Even down to this summer, like, I've been very open. You know, my instinct, my habit, because I've been going so long, because I've been a season ticket holder for so long. When the email comes, you know, in terms of renewal, I renewed it. But have I been to a game yet? No. But that's because of my inner feeling. I haven't got that natural desire to go and support and be there for the club right now because I feel like it's the company, not the club, that I'd be going mm-hmm. to support. Mm-hmm. And I just can't get my head around that. But it's taken me a good how long to get to this yeah, level. Yeah, of... and some people longer and some people will be after you. Some people have already been way before yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. Mate, so. 100%. A um, couple minutes to go, people. Like, still not on a thousand, but we'll get some Come super on, chats in. Oliver says, <laughs> you've seen the development in the Cronkite LA Rams case. I did. You know, it does sound good. Um, but at the same time, you know, these billionaires, um, I'm sure they're going to 
you know, find a way to wiggle out of it. It's not often mm-hmm. they do get done in the end. They've always got someone there. Now. And apparently they're trying to keep the court hearing within um, LA now, rather right. than externally, which was a big issue for them because they think that within... Listen, I don't know what's really going on. I just go off the, the news stories and headlines, but it does sound promising. Um, that something happens along the line this year that yeah, they and, some and, money. Yeah, I mean, listen, we want we want to see Cronkies go out. We want the billionaires to come in, but they do need to be not a Daniel Eck. They need to be proper, proper, serious, 300 billionaire kind of uh, billion pound kind of uh, people. So I think it's going to be different, difficult to get the Cronkies out unless a huge bid comes in. Yeah. And Shreth here says, glad to make you both smile. To be honest, I don't <laughs> think Conte would like to join us as he'd want to sell the lot. I prefer Bielsa. Great coach of youngsters. What do you think about that? I like Marco Bielsa a lot, mate. Yeah. I think he. I, I. I think Marcelo Bielsa is one of those managers who has a, a clear style and does not care if he's going to lead goals. Yeah. But he will go for it and be attractive. I really like that. I think what would be different with us is that we actually do have a good defence at the moment, in my opinion. Anyway, we've definitely got the personnel, and I think that we leads just don't do they. Yeah. So I think that that would be a real good shout. But again, I would have a lot of managers over Arteta. So I'm the wrong person to we'll ask. We'll get into bro. that next week yeah. when we're back, Dan. Dan <laughs> yeah, man. thanks for joining me. Up, it's seven o'clock. Hit the like button if you haven't already, and make sure you subscribe to Lee Judges TV. There's a link in the live chat right now, as well as my channel. Dan's on. Well, it's, it's Dan and Lee's channel, to be honest with you. Go over there and check it out. I'll be on there soon enough anyway. Love for the love, people. Tune in again tomorrow and see who's here for News Daily. Peace.